What's up, Wargamers? This is Isaiah, and I'd like to say welcome back to World of Wargaming. Today on Building a Better Table, we're going to look at making this portal. This is constructed almost entirely of XPS foam. Uh, this is the, the actual portal part is a little piece of cellophane with some pa paint and airbrush and things like that on it to decorate it. Held together with some PVA in some spots, some C, uh, C, some super glue in some other spots. Total work time on this is about, give or take, four hours. Um, and that's not all, you know, consistently straight through. This is, I worked on this over about two or three days. Oh, don't break it. <laughs> and uh, so over the course of, of, of two or three days, you know, three to four hours of work time to get this done and on the table. So if you haven't hit that like and subscribe and notification buttons yet, go ahead, tag those up for me and let's get in to building a better table. So my, I was right. My portal pieces are six inches across. So I'm going to mark the middle of that. Just give it a light little line. Next, I'm going to take my compass and we'll mark it. Oh, oh no. Pencil sharpen back in the game. Oh, mercy. I forgot what I did. Two. Yeah. Okay. just to score out and make it known how large I want this to be so that I can keep my entrance entrance more or less uniform. Now I'm gonna take my knife and cut this out. So minor setback in the cutting out process, but not a big deal. We're just gonna take some super glue, lay the pieces out, push that together, I'll give it like maybe five minutes and it'll be pretty rock solid uh, and then we can continue on and while it is unfortunate that that broke while it's getting reset I've got the middle piece from it that survived so we're gonna trace that out onto our second piece and get this one cut hopefully we don't break it like we did the other one next up we're gonna take a board and the wax paper is optional you don't really have to have it at this stage. You could also do this directly onto the plastic wrap. I just want to trace out that shape onto the wax paper or straight onto the cellophane. I like to do this step onto the wax paper because I feel like it sticks to the wax paper just a little bit better. Take this, pull a piece, lay it over the top. And with that plastic wrap laid across, we're gonna make our mixture. There are no real exact measurements here for doing this at least not when i do it this is about i mean i am using a measuring cup so in case you're wondering this is about 30 milliliters of water but i don't measure the glue or the paint or anything else i believe this is a step you kind of just have to measure with your heart we're going to add the glue some of that purple acrylic paint and we're going to stir Oh no, I've lost my stir stick. I right found back. my mixing stick. And with that done, we're gonna just paint this on and we wanna go outside the edge of that line because the plan here will be once we get this done, will be to sandwich it between the two layers of foam that make up the gates of the portal, the edge of the outside of it. So for now, I'm just gonna get it on here. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to try to work some texture into it the way that I think a portal should look. So let's cut to that. So with all that area covered, I want to come to the middle. And I'm just going to try to make some ripples. I'm just going to make, run my brush in a circle continuously until I get the impression of a ripple. Now you could do this really any kind of way you wanted, or you could not do it at all and just let the way the paint falls and moves on its own be what you do. But I'm going to try this one with a little bit of texture. We're going to be keeping the cellophane in between. We're going to be sandwiching 
um, the cellophane between two layers of this glue. So we're going to be putting this on this side and then when it dries we'll flip it over and do it on the other side as well. And sometimes with this step if you want to do it sometimes you have to just kind of paint it on and then let it dry for a few minutes and start to get tacky before you and by a few minutes I mean like probably 15-20 minutes. It's got a lot of water in it so it takes a little while to get fully all the way dry but that's you know keep playing with it add a little bit here add a little bit there but we'll come back when we're ready to flip over to the other side with those various things dry we're gonna go ahead and get these two base plate pieces glued together and i'm gonna be hacking at them a little bit so i'm gonna put them with some super glue now with the super glue and i've i had learned this lesson in the past but forgot as i'm prone to do um it's okay if you super glue onto this, the side, the outsides, they have a little bit of a coating on them, but the super glue will eat the foam, the actual foam on the inside. So with my piece that I broke earlier, I just cut a new piece. Um, I'll, I'll not gonna throw those away. Obviously they'll go into the scrap box of foam for rubble or whatever. We're just gonna glue that together and let that sit for about 20, 30 minutes. While the portal is still drying and working on that but that can be to the side um, this piece right here is dried up our base is dried up so we're gonna go ahead and shape these things now as you may have seen in other videos or may have not the way that I do stone is to just pull at a 45 and just take off chunks and I'm always trying to create facets if it you know tears oddly or whatever not a big deal you know we can always go back and adjust that now I'm gonna score this just a little bit because I'm gonna try to cut some steps into this coming down from where the portal will be my plan for doing that is to just put one extra step in each of these layers. So I'm gonna cut this, mark this about halfway, mark this about halfway. And I'm just gonna come and take out some material to make myself a step. All right, so with that bit done, I'm going to go ahead and get some gesso on this piece to get it ready to be primed, as well as I'm going to go ahead and gesso these. Now, I have not finished the edges on the outside here because I really want to get the pieces glued together before I start trying to finish that outer edge. I went ahead and shaped up the inside because once the uh, portal piece is laid into that, I'm not really going to be able to do a lot with my knife in there. So I want to go ahead and shape this up, but this outer bit, I want to leave that to shape up once I have the whole thing glued together. Which means that I will have to go back and paint some gesso on the side of which I mean, and I may just leave this bit undone. I haven't decided yet. I want to paint it before I get the portal piece in there. Yeah, I think that's the, I think this is the proper order of operations is to wait to shape those bits, but I may change my mind. But either way, I'm gonna clean my workspace up and I'm definitely gonna go put some gesso on the base. 
All right, so our sheet, our film, the portal piece is almost dry. These, however, are prim primed up, blacked up, ready to go. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take these over to the dirty paint station. Now I'm gonna load up my airbrush, but you could just as easily do this with dry brushing. I'm gonna do it with a layer of kind of a light mid-tone and then a light gray, and then a dry brush of a very, very, very light gray, which will probably be spaceship exterior from the Army Painter. The other grays that I'll be using, I can't give you a name for because I'll be mixing them as I go, but examples, close examples for what I'm going for are probably gonna be something along the lines of Administratum Gray, followed by Dawnstone, and then followed by the Spaceship Exterior. When I airbrush these, I'm gonna to try to follow the facets. If you're dry brushing along, then just do a really, really, really heavy dry brush with your first gray, and then a much lighter dry, dry brush with your second gray, and then a super light dry brush just kind of on your edges with the spaceship exterior or whatever very, very light gray you choose. Okay, so with that little bit of dry brush, little bit of airbrush work done, I've got one more step before I insert my portal, which I got dried and hit with the airbrush, just some concentric circles and various shades of purple and some hot pink. But with that complete and ready to go, we're gonna take on this part and on the inside here, on both pieces, on the inside, and then coming down the steps, I'm gonna take my airbrush and just hit that with some really kind of dark purple going down and then have it get a little bit brighter. Just create a little bit of a, of a glow effect of light coming out of the front of this portal. Now I did not paint the back of my portal. I have no intention to it of doing so. Um, just didn't want to. But you could if you wanted to. You could absolutely do that if you wanted to. Because it's your portal. You do what you want with it. Okay, so we got our little bit of, of glow effect on the inside of there and coming down the steps and everything. So our next step is going to be to assemble the top portion of this. So the first thing we want to decide there is what side is the front and what side is the back. Now, if you notice, I'm going to have some little gaps here where that foam is still showing, but once everything is glued together, I will go back and paint that stuff out so that we don't see it. I think I want this to be the front of my portal no no I like this side so we're gonna take our portal piece and we're gonna cut that out so we've got that all cut out and for now we're not gonna worry if this is a little bit bigger we can go we'll go back and trim that out at a later time and date what we want to do now is take our just plain old white glue and put a decent layer on the inside of this. Not too thick, because we don't want it to poke out, ook out the sides or anything like that. We want it just enough that it's gonna be able to hopefully grab on to our portal piece and keep it locked and pulled tight. Now, we may run into a little bit of technical difficulty when we get down to the bottom of this and making sure that that sits the way we want it to sit. That's the back piece. So we're putting this on like this. And we're just gonna lay that over, line it up. Make sure we pull it tight. That's, that's important here. Wanna make sure we pull it tight. And then we wanna weight that down. So again, I'm gonna resort to some of the heaviest, probably the heaviest object that I own. The old, good old 6th edition, 7th edition 40K rule book. And we're just going to set that on there, let that dry for at least, I would say, an hour. Um, while that's drying, though, we're going to take our other piece here, and we're going to prep this to attach it to this. So to do that, we want to take a rod. We want to cut two pieces, and we want to make sure that we put a 45 on both ends. We need two pointy sides to this so that we can easily stick it in when the time comes. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put these into this side. Now to do that, I'm gonna kinda make a little bit of a guide hole and then I will go back and add my glue. I'm gonna leave these kind of long because I want to be able to get all the way through to the bottom of the base plate just for security and structure. So we got our holes poked in. Be, you know, go slow with this. We don't want to wreck a lot of work that we've already done by being fast and hurried and careless. So just take your time, it'll go. And we're gonna take that white glue, make sure the bottle's open generally helps. And just put some glue down into that hole and then add our dowels. Again, don't want to push too, don't want to be too aggressive with this. Just let it go. We can always, you know, trim that down later if need be. And now we're back to the waiting game of just letting stuff dry. With that thoroughly dry, we're now ready to put on our top piece. Now here, I'm going to put the glue onto this and then set it on top of the other piece. So again, just a good thin layer. Doesn't have to be anything too extreme. Um, use a brush, credit card, piece of plastic, your finger, whatever you got handy. Spread that out so you got a good even layer. Wipe that on the pants leg. Bring over our other piece. We're just gonna lay that right on top. Try your best, make sure you got it lined up the way you need it to be. And then we're gonna put that book back on top of here and we'll come back and trim up these edges in just a few minutes. With that glue dry, we're ready to kind of a firmly attach this. Now I'm gonna do this from the back because again, I have this more or less set up and intended to not really be seen that much from the front. Um, but you could easily join this side. The, the, the glue is gonna dry clear, so not a, not a big deal. And we wanna take this, not gonna thin it down. And I just wanna get a little bit of a layer right there at that seam. Sometimes kinda of hold it with your finger. If it ripples a little bit, that's not, not a great big deal. It's a portal after all. It's not a static curtain, you know, it's an entrance to another plane of existence. Given that they're in hell, this portal may come to make it to Earth. Cabal go in there and wreak all kinds of havoc. I just want to get that built up and then let it sit. If a little comes through on the front or if you want to add a little bit to the front as well. I'm going to do right here. That is okay. And then again, just let that sit for a while to dry and we'll be done here. Okay, so with everything glued down and locked in place, there's our finished portal. Got a little good little glow coming out of there. Everything's locked down, it's tight, it's not moving. We're ready to put this on the table for whatever purposes you might have. Now, if you were making this to shoot video, and I'm not, I'm not definitely not doing this, but I'm gonna say something that just could be done. You could, if you really wanted to, in this section, just put a piece of green or blue and then have a green screen built into it and you could put like show, you know, go with where the portal's going. But this for, for my needs, just for the sake of playing games and having cool looking terrain on the table, this, this works for me. The back side of mine is not quite as polished, but I'm okay with the back of the portal, you know, 
casting a little bit of a dimmer light and not being quite as bright because this is the side that really really matters so i'm really really happy with how this turned out man i'm i'm super excited to put this on the table and move some toy soldiers around it and on it and through it and everything else i hope you guys have enjoyed it. i hope you guys have taken something away from here that you'll be able to use in your own hobby and, and to build your own better battlefields your more immersive games thank you so much for stopping by i hope you have a great rest of your day we will see y'all next time that does it for today thank you so much for tuning in to world of war gaming if you've enjoyed the content that you saw today consider hitting that like button for me if you want to see more content like what you saw today consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting that bell for notifications so that you get alerts whenever i post new content and if you liked what you saw so much that you would like to contribute to the continuation of it, then check out the description below. You'll find a link to the Patreon account for the studio. Um, and there are numerous tiers there structured for however little or however much you would like to help out. And I want you to know that regardless of any of those things, if you do any of those things or don't do any of those things, I'm incredibly grateful that you stopped by and hung out today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I hope that the dice are ever in your favor.